Owen and Mazze, The True Story of a Remarkable Friendship by Isabella Hatkoff, Craig Hatkoff, and Dr. Paula Kahumbu. Photographs by Peter Gretze. This story began in Malindi, Kenya, on the east coast of Africa in December 2004. A pod of hippopotamuses was grazing along the shore of the Indian Ocean. Suddenly, giant surging waves from a tsunami rushed high onto the beach. The powerful waves caused destruction for miles around. After the water went down, only one hippo remained, and it was stranded on a reef. Hundreds of villagers worked for hours to rescue the 600-pound baby. Finally, a man named Owen caught the animal, which was later named after him. The rescuers wrapped the hippo in a net and placed him in a pickup truck. People weren't sure where Owen should be taken next. They called Holler Park, an animal sanctuary about 50 miles away near the city of Mombasa. Dr. Paula Kahumbu, the manager, immediately offered Owen a place to live there. She explained that he could never be returned to the wild. Since he was still a baby, he wouldn't have learned yet how to fend for himself and he would never be welcomed into another hippo pod. He would be seen as an intruder and attacked. But they would take good care of him in Holler Park. Dr. Paula offered to drive to Melindy herself to bring Owen to his new home. Dr. Paula knew she would need help. She asked the chief animal caretaker, Stephen Twee, to come along with her. She knew that Stephen had a special way with animals. Some people said he could even talk to them. Dr. Paula and Stephen quickly set off in her small truck to Melindy. Meanwhile, ecologist Sabina Baer got to work with others at Holler Park to prepare for Owen's arrival. When Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived in Melindy, they helped to remove the nets and lead Owen out of the pickup. But Owen became angrier than ever and charged at the people gathered around. They tried to help him calm down by wrapping a blanket around his head. That way, he wouldn't see the things that were upsetting him. But Owen was angry about that too. After many hours, about a dozen rescuers managed to move Owen from the pickup into Dr. Paula's truck tying him so that he would be safe during the long drive to Holler Park. Meanwhile, Sabina and other workers prepared a large enclosure for Owen. They chose a part of the park that had a pond and a mud wallow, as well as tall trees and brush, everything a hippo could want. The area was already home to a number of bush bucks, vervet monkeys, and a giant Aldabra tortoise called Mazze. Mazze, whose name means wise old man in the Swahili language, was the oldest creature in the park. At about 130 years of age, he had been alive since before Stephen's great-grandmother was born. He wasn't very friendly, except to Stephen, who seemed to know just what he liked, such as getting tickled under the chin. Otherwise, Mazay kept to himself. No one could have guessed how Mazay's life was about to change. Finally, Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived with Owen, who was now weak and exhausted. As soon as the ropes that held him were untied, Owen scrambled from the truck directly to Mazze, resting in a corner of the enclosure. Owen crouched behind Mazze, the way baby hippos often hide behind their mothers for protection. At first, Mazze wasn't happy about this attention. He hissed at Owen and crawled away. But Owen, who could easily keep up with the old tortoise, did not give up. Slowly as the night went on, Mazze began to accept his new companion. When the park workers checked on them in the morning, Owen was snuggled up against Mazze, and Mazze didn't seem to mind at all.
over the next few days, Zay continued to crawl away and Owen continued to follow him. But sometimes it was Owen who would walk away from Mazay and Mazay who would follow. Bit by bit, Mazay grew friendlier. At first, Owen wouldn't eat any of the leaves left out for him. Stephen and the other caretakers were worried that he would weaken even more. Then they noticed Owen feeding right beside Mazay, as if Mazay were showing him how to eat. Or perhaps it was Mazay's protective presence that helped Owen feel calm enough to eat. No one will ever know, but it was clear that the bond between Owen and Mazay was helping the baby hippo to recover from being separated from his mother and stranded in the sea. As the weeks went on, Owen and Mazay spent more and more time together. Soon, they were inseparable. Their bond remains very strong to this day. They swim together, eat together, drink together, and sleep next to each other. They rub noses. Owen leads the way to different parts of the enclosure, then Mazay leads the way. Owen playfully nuzzles Mazay's neck, and Mazay stretches his neck forward, asking for more just as he does when Stephen tickles him under the chin. Though both animals could easily injure each other, they are gentle with one another. A sense of trust has grown between them. Wildlife experts are still puzzled about how this unlikely friendship came to be. Most have never heard of a mammal, such as Owen, and a reptile, such as Mazay, forming such a strong bond. Perhaps for Owen it happened this way. Young hippos like Owen need their mothers in order to survive. An old slow tortoise like Mazay can never protect Owen the way a fierce mother hippo could. But since Mazay's collaring and rounded shape are similar to a hippo's, it's possible that to Owen, Mazay looks like the hippo mother he needs. Harder to explain is the affection that Mazay seems to show for Owen. Like most Aldabra tortoises, Mazay had always preferred to be alone. But sometimes these tortoises live in groups, and perhaps Mazay sees Owen as a fellow tortoise, the first tortoise he is willing to spend time with. Or perhaps Mazay knows that Owen isn't a tortoise, but likes him anyway. The reasons are unclear, but science can't always explain what the heart already knows. Our most important friends are sometimes those we least expected. News of Owen and Mazay's friendship quickly spread around the world. People all over have come to love Owen, who endured so much, yet never gave up, and Mazay, who became Owen's friend when he needed one most. Their photographs have appeared in countless newspaper and magazine articles. Television programs and even a film documentary have been made about them. Visitors come to Holler Park every day to meet the famous friends. Owen suffered a great loss, but with the help of many caring people and through his own extraordinary resilience, Owen has begun a new happy life. Most remarkable is the role that Mazay has played. We'll never know for sure whether Owen sees Mazay as a mother, a father, or a very good friend, but it really doesn't matter. What matters is that Owen isn't alone and neither is Mazay. And that is the true story of Owen and Mazay, two great friends. <laughs>